Good morning, everybody. I'm Bobby Pellant. I'm here with Ray Chihata. I'm coming from you from Roberta Pellant Consulting. Ray is a former CEO of Hitachi Systems Worldwide and Hitachi Systems USA. Welcome, Ray, for being with me this morning. Can I have you introduce yourself and tell me a little bit more about you? Thank you, Roberta, and thank you for having me. Um, I started my career in 1987 in banking. I'm from banking. After uh, seeing all different types of verticals and industries, I decided to go on my own and become an entrepreneur. And ever since then, I've been basically an entrepreneur uh, building companies. Thank you for that. So what I have, what I want to talk to you today about is that with this coronavirus, we know that we can't go back to business as usual. We have to adjust. We have to pivot. I'm talking about small businesses to major Fortune 100 companies. We have seen a decrease in revenue in quarter two that I, I think that we'll continue to see into quarter three, as you know. So tell me about what is a successful formula for doing business? In every uh, business that I've had, regardless of the vertical, I basically brought it down to what I call the five C's. And once you establish the five C's, the rest comes naturally. So the first C is you got to figure out what the culture of the company is going to be. You got to instill that culture. And once you instill that culture, then you define the character of the company. What do you stand for? And so on and so forth. Once you establish the character, you got to establish how you compassionate you're going to be. How you're going to be compassionate towards your uh, team members and towards your clients. Which then, if you have the right culture and the right character, and you have the right compassion, it increases the capacity. People are now producing more, are more engaged in the corporation values, and they take it to the next level. Once you get to those four C's, the next step is you get credibility in the marketplace and that allows you to attract more people that are type a top of the gun personalities into your, into your um, realm. And once you do the five C's, whether it's in sports, whether it's in um, uh, cybersecurity, whether it's in manufacturing, the five C's remain the same. Today we have a stall we call we were stalled in the middle of the raceway we've got to put it back in first gear we've got to get to something quick so we can start and then i go to what i call the quick quick program which is the four s's so you must start scalable sustainable successes you you do small 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 projects but you get kickstarted and that's what needs to be done in conjunction with the five c's you have to redefine yourselves and reanalyze your five c's and see what, where you wanna go and how you're gonna get there. Thank you. So from a CEO standpoint, what is, how would you compare and contrast what's happened previously with this crisis to crises in the past? Well, it's not comparable. For every crisis we've had, there's never been a comparison to this one. There's been similar ones. In 1987, we had Black Monday, and once we had that, we changed the way the computers handle the trades and said never again we let computers uh, dictate how the market uh, collapses or is successful. In 1999, we had Y2K and then we saw what happened with the Y2K situation and we realized there was a lot of fear that was unfounded. And in 2001, we had 9-11, which changed our life of how we travel and how we are more cognizant of things that can happen, but we never thought that things could happen. And in 2008, we had the financial world meltdown that showed us how greed around the world brings us to our knees. But today in 2020, we realized how we cannot go back to where we were. We need to have a better system. We need to make sure that we're never on our knees again for anything. We've outsourced so many core staples that today we can't turn around and get things from our manufacturers as fast as we need them. And I believe that the economy is going to find a way to absorb more in-house productions. Yes, it might cost more, but you're going to employ more. And then those people are going to spend more 
and it, it's a it's a circle. So are we going to keep giving uh, our production outside or are going to bring it back inside to make sure that we're never back on our knees? And that's a whole type of mentality where we need to change our mindset. We need to shift. And going back to where it was is not going to happen. Agreed. So tell me from an executive level standpoint, what are going to be some of the main challenges that organizations are going to see? Well, I think the, the first challenge is how to convince your workforce to go back in the office. I think they've done a very good job of enumerating to us the challenges and the, and the risks associated with it. I think overall, the world has done a very good job in trying to keep the virus contained. Um, obviously, we've had uh, a lot of deaths, and one death is one too much. However, we've, we've shown that we can work remotely. So the old paradigms are shifting. Are we going to need all these office towers? Probably not. Are we going to need to convert those office towers into maybe condos or apartments or different types of venues? Yes. So working from home is going to be a key, a key element into how we get to the next level. We're also going to need to effectively work with social distancing. I mean, whether you get the vaccine or not is, is not that uh, point. The point's going to be is how is your mindset going to deal with it? How are you going to be mentally able to cope with all the stress that's happening? So the companies that are going to be able to say, okay, we need to reevaluate the way we work. One thing for sure, we don't make money at sales. We make money at purchase. And we're going to have to reevaluate all the costs to make sure that we're in line with the sales. Market dictates the sales price. So when market dictates the sales price, you got to work backwards and you got to say, well, what is my cost associated with this sale? So cost of acquisition and so on and so forth. And get rid of all the fixed costs that you can get rid of. And from, um, from that point of view, the whole financial uh, model is not going to be the same as it was before. So hard decisions have to be made. You may have to uh, find better ways to optimize your sales. And I think that's where trying the same thing over and over the old way, it's simply not going to work anymore. Right. Thank you. And speaking about financials, as you know, most of my clients right now are scrambling to either get capital or funding or to you know, get back and get kickstarted. Tell me how you think this is going to affect banking and or the government sectors. Well, if we go back to the first premise, if I'm going to have more people bringing more goods and services in-house, I'm going to need help from the government. Call it perhaps an hourly subsidy to be competitive to what's happening overseas. Companies can't afford to pay more but if they get a government subsidy or, um, or a, a, a help regarding a tax break that's going to enable you to keep the price as low as possible, that's going to be one element. The other element we have to think about is how do we, re we put cash flow back into the hands of the businesses? So typically speaking, banks give you lines of credits based on 60-day, you know, 90-day. They, they, they reduce the percentage of financing. We're going to have to have longer terms. We're going to need to have longer financing terms for every company and the banks are going to have to play ball maybe insure the receivables and find some insurance uh, policies that are going to insure your receivables in the event that it takes longer to pay and collect them there's no cash flow in in the marketplace to to kick start this economy people are willowing in in what i call analysis paralysis they, they don't know what to do and they're looking for guidance and they're looking left and right but at the end of the day from a financial point of view, the whole models are going to change with regard to financing. And from a government point of view, they need to bring in business people um, to help them and guide them into what businesses need in order to be competitive and successful. We're going to have bigger government and bigger companies. And that's the danger of where we're heading because the small business is going to take a big hit in this process. And if we don't find a way to save the small and medium sized businesses, they're just not going to survive. Agreed. I'm agreeing with everything that you have to say, Ray. This is a brilliant conversation. And I think a lot of people need to hear this. 
Um, one of the last questions I have for you before I get to your final thoughts is, are there any key tools that executive teams can kind of um, get above the, the curve, if you will, and get ahead of what, what we need to do to prepare ourselves for this new normal? Well, first, the executive team must throw out the, the, the rule book and the playbook. They got to throw out the rules, they got to throw out the playbook, and they got to reestablish new rules and new plays. That's the first step. They have to be honest with each other. And they have to make the hard, hard, hard decisions. If you're not going to do them, your competitor is going to be doing them. And it's nice to try to save everyone, but you can't. You need to, you, you need to let go of some people in order to save the rest of the people. Trying to be... Um, trying to be in a position where everybody has a place, it simply won't work. So you need to reanalyze, refocus, not be afraid of making decisions. You're going to make mistakes. There's no right answer. And that's okay. We're all going to learn along the way. But remember that your competitor is look, looking to do things that you may be not willing to do or you haven't thought of them. Benchmark against who is the best uh, decision makers and try to talk to them. I think one of the things we have to be open to is reaching out to other CEOs and having those conversations and, 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 and hearing and doing these symposiums of either CEOs, COOs, CFOs, where they, they, they get into a Zoom meeting and they, and they talk about the challenges and they share ideas. I think sharing ideas today is going to be very, very crucial of how to get to the next step. We can't be shy. And we, it's okay to say, I don't know. It's okay to say, I'm not sure, but we're going to try this. We need to innovate ourselves. We need to be the entrepreneurial, innovative spirit that the U.S. always has had. We need to make sure that we take it to the next level without fearing failure. And that's the key. Do you have any parting thoughts about this topic that you can share with the viewers? The financial models are going to be the financial models. The CFOs are going to come to the table. The COOs are going to come to the table. What we really need right now is to have what I call the human capital um, executive come to the table. They need to be around the table. The, the, the mental health is so crucial to, to, the, to where the corporations are going to go. The mental health is going to be the key. Whichever corporation has the strongest mental health programs is going to be the one that's going to be far ahead of the others. You cannot emphasize more than a person who is just not feeling it person who's down they you know don't watch the news it clearly focus on what your life's about focus on the fact that you're home and your kids are home and you're enjoying that far, a part of it and it doesn't matter what you do between nine and five you do between five and nine the next morning flex time is important this quality time take it as a positive not a negative find ways to empower yourself go and read self self-help books you know, expand your horizons, do what needs to be done. But the corporation has a big, big challenge in front of them and they need to have a compassionate element to their business. And if you don't have that, then the, the, the 12, 13, 14 million unemployed who are gonna place themselves, because there's a lot of good qualified people there, they're gonna need to look and see which company has the best compassionate program. Where do I wanna be associated with? So. I think from that point of view, the CEOs have to change their, their, their mindset as, po as soon as possible. And yes, like I said, the CFO CEOs are very important, but I would look at the chief human capital officer as being just as important, if not more in this time of, 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 of uh, world grief. Everybody's mourning in some way, shape or form. You're mourning your past, you're mourning your liberties, you're mourning some deaths, you're mourning the fact that you, know, you, 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 are, you are stressed perhaps out of your mind that you're going to get this virus, the unknown. And then you just got to get out of the morning stage and, and start living again. I think the big thing we all mourn is change. Right. It's not going to be back business as usual. Right. And we don't know what the future holds. So we have to be prepared for this new future and to get, and to take this time now to set, set processes in place so that we can thrive, not only survive, but thrive in this new environment. I think, I think you said it, I think you said it best, Roberta. We need to look at this new future as a new adventure, as an exciting adventure. 
not view the past of saying, I wish I had the past. It didn't work. Clearly the systems have failed us. It's because it didn't work. We thought it was working, you know, on the, on the, on the numbers were great, but the, when you look deep down, it didn't work. It, it collapsed. So we should be exciting. Think of us like a, a discoverer coming to find the new world, which is, you know, North America when they, when they were embarking on that, on that, on that trip. We need to look at, at ourselves like explorers and we're going to explore this new, the, the, this new challenge and we should, cradle it and embrace it and look forward to it rather than look at it as a negativity look at it as a positivity and the ones that view it as a positive event are going to do very well in this environment if i look at my kids generation they've lived 9 11 they've lived uh the, the world crisis and now they're living this they're going to be very strong their mental state's going to be very strong nothing's going to scare them you know, we were protected. I was born in 63. What exactly happened from 63 to 87? Not, not much. You know, it was very, it was smooth sailing as, as much as possible. But when I look at how strong uh, my kids are and in, in resilient that they are because of what they've lived, it's a good thing for them. It's not a bad thing for them. Thank you. So in summary, can you just quickly go over the, the C formula? Right. So in today, you have to evaluate the culture of the company. And if it doesn't work in today's new world, you have to change it. And that comes from the human capital point of view. The character comes from the C-level executives. Like we have to evaluate under this new term, under this new discovery, what's going to be, who, what do we stand for? What's going to be our go-to environment? And then, like I said, the compassion has to be there. If people are not working at 100% today, give them a break, give them some time off. Tomorrow is another day and figure it out. If customers can't pay and they're struggling, be compassionate about it. Don't cut them off. Work with them. And, and then that, that overall is going to increase the capacity. If, if your customer knows that you've got his back, I guarantee you he's going to give you back that business tenfold when he's on his feet. And that's what we have to believe in ourselves. And the credibility factor is going to be that people blog today. You can't hide. People blog on Glassdoor and they blog on different uh, social media. And people are going to say, I want to go work for that company. I want, to, I want to be part of that team. And I think the companies that apply the five C's, more importantly, are going to be extremely successful in this new adventure. Take the board, erase it, go back and see what worked in the past. Why did it work? And can it work in the future? And if the answer is it won't work, then as successful as it was in the past, you must stop doing it because it simply won't work in the future. Well, there you have it. Ray, thank you so very much for sharing your thoughts um, with me this morning. I look forward to hearing more about what you think we need to do as C-level executives to survive in this new world with an optimistic future. So thank you very much for your time, Ray. And I really enjoyed talking to you this morning. Thank you for having me.